morning everyone the peace of the lord be with you we want to take this opportunity to welcome vivian uh, we have dealt in this and it's wonderful to have you back here with us Thank you. Thank you. our call to worship this morning is up on the screen Lord, thank you for our Parktown North Methodist community. Thank you that each one of us has a purpose here. We are all different, but your love unites us. Will you pray? Lord, Lord help us to work together. May we fulfill your purposes. May we reflect your love. We thank you for the racial, cultural, and language representations in our church. This brings such beauty and richness to our community. Lord, may we experience the differences of our spouses, but rather thank you for the older members of our community. Thank you for the wisdom that comes with age. Thank you for our young people. Thank you for their enthusiasm and energy. Help us to work together in our stories and ages in different ways. We all have unique gifts and talents. No one is more important or less important. We are all a necessary part of your church. Lead us and guide us. May we grow in numbers. May we grow in maturity. Help us to become a strong, caring community. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I welcome you to the service this morning. Our opening hymn is To God Be the Glory. Let us stand and worship the Lord in song.
Come, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we do indeed praise your name. We thank you, Lord, and we pray that the earth will hear your voice. We rejoice in you, Lord. We come to you, Father, through Jesus the Son, and we give you the glory for all that you've done, Lord, for bringing us here today and, and Lord, for giving us the freedom to worship you. Father, we thank you for that moment when we received our pardon from Jesus, and we just <coughs> praise and bless your name for that redemption that you've given us, Lord, for that freedom from sin that you've given us, for the path that you've shown us that we need to follow. And Lord, we pray that we will be purer and higher and greater, Lord, and that our wonder and our rapture is the day we look forward to when we see Jesus face to face. So Heavenly Father, I just bring this service to you this morning. I, I pray that your spirit will be amongst us. I pray, Lord, that we would be open to your spirit and that we would receive the message that you have for us today. I thank you, Lord, for each and every family that is represented here, Lord. I thank you, Father, for dedication and I thank you for obedience to your word and to your instruction to us, Lord, to worship and to fellowship together. And Father, just as we go into the service, I pray that you would remain with us. In Jesus' precious name, amen. It's say the Lord's name. easily shake hands or greet physically let us greet with eye contact and with raised hands peace to you all this morning notices let's start off with um, birthdays Eddie and Como birthday and um, Quizy uh, Natsele they share a birthday today, and we celebrate with them and wish them a wonderful day. On Wednesday, our beloved Liz has a birthday, so please, I'm sure we all have a contact for her. So please remember her in your prayers and um, do contact her to say to wish her a happy birthday. And Hazel Chitsungui also has a birthday on Wednesday. And Thursday, the 27th, Elizabeth Gibson celebrates her birthday. There are, as I'm sure you are aware, um, requests, prayer requests that are distributed in the pew bulletin. So please just keep those requests in your prayer lists. And after those people up to the Lord, that their prayer requests are acknowledged and that the Lord will do what he needs to do in terms of answering them. 
And please also remember, we do every day of the, the year on a weekly basis, we distribute names of members of the congregation throughout all the services who we pray for on a daily basis. Each person gets given a day. So please just follow that as well and pray for those people on each day as you speak to the Lord in your way. There is still a job opportunity in the office, two day a week administration position. Um, CVs, CVs can be emailed to the office, parkmethodnetactor.co.za. The candidate must be fully versed in English and at least one vernacular language. They must also be willing to work for an hour once a month in the evening to take minutes at a leaders meeting. A good computer literacy command would do well, as well as knowledge of the MCA organization structures and operations. So if you or anyone that you know of fills that, um, those uh, requirements, please do contact the office so that we can interview any possible candidates for that position. Connie Nyoy is still also looking for a caregiving position. She's a professional caregiver, with a good, comes with good recommendations from a member of our congregation. So she's looking for work from the 1st of February and her contact number is available um, through the office or um, on, in the Pew Bulletin as well. Please note that there is Bible study every Wednesday here at the church that starts at six o'clock and there will be a, a Bible study this Wednesday starting at six and usually doesn't go on for more than an hour. So it's just an hour in the week and it's time to explore either what's been delivered as the sermon on the previous Sunday, or if, if anything else that laid, is laid on a person's heart to actually study on that Wednesday. So it's, it's a good way to get closer to the word of God. So please keep that in mind. The Women's Auxiliary AGM is on the 22nd of January from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. And I'm taking it will be here at the church. It will be here at the, at the church. It isn't in the bulletin, but it will be here. Is that right? Oh, okay. Gosh. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Did it go well? <laughs> okay. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. This one's still coming up. The 22nd, <laughs> the 22nd of January is the, the circuit quarterly meeting um, at, at the church. Forest, at Forest Town, big problem. Okay. Um, so that's this Wednesday at 7 p.m., the quarterly, the first quarterly of the year. And if we can all please just diarize the 31st of January, 6 p.m., um, it will be the Parktown North Annual Society um, uh, AGM, the Society AGM. And it's open to all members, so please do attend. It's important for us. Um, as a community to get together and, and discuss the business that, that needs to be discussed and for the forthcoming year in particular. And for, le for leaders of Parktown North, we do have a leaders meeting on the 7th of February, so that will be the following Monday after the AGM. Okay, and, and another very important announcement, please. We would like to make sure that we have a record of everybody's details. So if they need, you need to update your details or if you aren't yet on our, our system, please do make a, a point of, of either contacting the office or going onto the mymethod.me um, where you can fill in your details. It's, it's important for us from a communication point of view as well as from a celebration point of view in terms of your birthdays, your anniversaries, and important dates like that. And, and we don't want to miss celebrating with you uh, on an on occasion such as that. So please just make sure that the office does have your um, updated details so, so that we are able to communicate with you um, either by email or telephonically. And, and as I said, there's various methods of doing it. You can contact the office directly and speak to um, Nazreen, who at the moment is fulfilling the um, administrator's duties full time until we do have a second lady or gentleman in that position. So there's that way, or you could just write your details down, give it to somebody here in the service or drop it off at the office, or go onto the system, um, the mymethodist.me. And with that, I think we'll um, take up our offering for the week.
please do take note that um, for those of you online, the banking details should appear there. If not, again, please do contact the office if you would like to make a donation and they will give you the banking details. Christ Jesus who strengthens them. Pour out your countenance upon them and may your grace be sufficient for them. We bring to you Elizabeth Gibson and we just ask the Lord that you would be very close to her and that you in this year that lies ahead would bless her with good health. We bring to you our monetary offering and we ask that you bless it for the furtherance of your kingdom here at Park Town Hall. We also pray, O oh Lord, that as we bring our lives to you this morning, that you would receive it as living sacrifices and pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, just before we read our scripture, we sing together, Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew.
is taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 to 21. Um, the subheading is Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. He was teaching in their synagogues, and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery of sight for the blind, and to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Here is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I just want to take this opportunity. I, I have allowed Avela to walk back um, because I know she might not have enjoyed standing up here when I said this. But Avela had just um, completed her year 12 and um, she did exceptionally well with a few um, distinctions. And as a church, we want to congratulate you, Avela, officially and say to you, May God guide you in the path that lies ahead as you move into tertiary. May God bless you and well done. Good, good. Come, let us pray. May the words of my mouth, O God, and the meditations of our hearts, may they be pleasing in your sight, you, O God, who has always been our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen. Friends, I have entitled my sermon this morning, Led by the Spirit. Led by the Spirit. And I wonder whether we have given it any thought how God would use us as he leads us into um, the spaces of what the Spirit does. And so I thought this morning to remind us of the text and where the text finds itself. Do you remember that in Luke's passage, Luke chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 13. It is the Spirit of God that leads Jesus into Galilee. It is the Spirit of God that reports to the people what they hear. It is the Spirit of God that allows Jesus to travel and to do teaching. Remember, the Spirit of God uh, falling upon Jesus at the baptism that we've just done last week. Um, so the Spirit leads, the Spirit falls, the Spirit empowers, but the Spirit empowers for, 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 for prophetic work. And it's all about if the Spirit of God is upon someone, what does the Spirit of God do to the people that are engaged? For instance, in the life of Jesus, we ask the question, what does the Spirit of God do to Zechariah? What does the Spirit of God do to Elizabeth? What does the Spirit of God do to Simeon and to John? And we see that the Spirit of God is something that empowers. So if that is true, let's look at how the Spirit of God is empowering in a city called Nazareth. Do you have any idea what the town Nazareth was all about? Let me explain to you this kind of town. This kind of town is an agricultural town. So it's a town where it's all about planting stuff and all about vegetables and that kind of stuff. So imagine that in your mind's eye. Imagine the kind of people Jesus would be going to. Imagine also in your mind's eye that this town is not any further from the capital of, of Galilee. 
you remember the capital of Galilee? The capital of Galilee at that time was Sepphoris. And at that very time, that capital city was being rebuilt. Remember, the Assyrians, the Persians, the Babylonians had come and destroyed everything. All these people were being was sent into captivity. All these people had lost their land. So imagine, imagine when this passage comes to life, how important this passage is for people who are agricultural in nature. Anything that you would understand for being agricultural in nature? What word would pop up in your mind? One word should pop up, land. So in this town, in this town, are people who's very worried about their land because their ancestors' land were taken. And now suddenly, the Roman empire, the, the Roman empire is again existing. And so what do they fear? They fear that their land will be taken. Do you understand that? They fear, it's the conversation a lot of South Africa has at the moment called land appropriation. Is that the word? Okay. Expropriation. Someone knows more than I. And that's a beautiful thing. Um, when, 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 when you're not sure what you're about to say, whether that would be good for the community or bad for the community. But there's all kinds of people within an audience. Isn't that so? So you never know when you speak to someone who it will benefit or whom it will displease. And so here's the conversation. The conversation says that Jesus gets to the place as was customary for him. And he gets there and he simply is handed the scroll. Now, what's important to know is that the text says he finds what he wants to read. And when he finds what he wants to read, it's not just because he said, any, meeny, miny, moo. Have you ever been in those spaces when you're wanting to read the Bible and you say, let me see what's the verse, and you flip and you wake up? Have you ever, ever done that? Let's see what God has to say. And you turn the page and you say, oh, that's the word. The word of God says that Jesus looked for the passage of scripture in the scroll of Isaiah. And it says in there that he went particularly particularly for Isaiah 61. Knows his context. It's his hometown. It's where he grew up. He knows what people are battling with. And the word of God says, and he begins to read. And what he reads, the word says, is that he reads that the spirit of the Lord is upon him. And he reads that justice will be returned to the poor, to the marginalized, to the oppressed, to all of that, right? And he battles with something profound in that text. And so the text speaks about Tochai, meaning in Hebrew, that it takes us all the way back to chapter one. And chapter one speaks about the following. It says, that the, the rich and those who deemed themselves better than everybody else had already met with Jesus and they left empty handed because what he said, they did not appreciate. So I'm wondering in the context of our lives today, whoever the preacher might be that would preach here, could that be good news for us? Could that which is prophetic be good in our hearing? Listen to what happens in the audience. In the audience, the word of God says that they had set their eyes upon Jesus. So when we listen to those words, does it sound as if those words are great words? It sounds for a brief moment as if they sing, turn your eyes upon Jesus. It sounds like that. 
But when we investigate this further, they simply came to criticize. They simply came to criticize because this is what Jesus says. He says to the poor, he says to the poor that this God who has brought you back out of captivity will restore your riches. In the Beatitudes, it says, blessed are the poor for they shall inherit the earth. Do you understand? Do you understand the essence of that? We're in a, an agricultural town, and suddenly Jesus says, it's the ones that don't have that God will bless. And so says to those who have much, and you know what happens in any community, those who have a lot, those who think themselves to be better than others, ridicule and bully those who have far less. And when they speak to those who have far less, they speak down to those who have far less. And the thing that Jesus does is that Jesus comes and Jesus says, that's not on. The fact that you have more, the fact that you are privileged is precisely a fact that says that you should share and give to the poor. So when we hear that, when we are privileged, I wonder how that makes us feel. I wonder how being led by the Spirit of God, when Jesus makes this utterance and says, you know what, there are poor people among you. Whilst you're worried about the Romans, maybe you need to be worried about those who don't care. And he uses the next word, and he says, I bring, I bring justice to the oppressed. So my question, therefore, would be, in our today's life, in this congregation, who would be the oppressed among us? And I think it's simple. The oppressed becomes the people whose voice we've taken away. And you know, this is the reality about social dynamics, is that those who are more privileged <clears throat> financially are the ones that will speak low. And the people that have less are finding themselves that they need to speak less. And it's a true thing, because when you are more privileged, you seem to own that you need to oppress others. And that's what Jesus brings into our scope. That's what Jesus brings into our scope of our understanding to say, can you check your blind spot? Maybe your voice is loud because you see yourself better than others. Maybe, maybe you do what you do because of your financial state. I wonder, friends, what Jesus would mean. Because at this point, at this point, most of his people are no longer in prison. And he says then, I will set my captives free. From Isaiah. And he says, this day, this word has become true in your year. So who are the captives? I think sometimes the captives are all of us. Because in most of our understanding, when we are captives, we need to ask the question, what are we enchained to? What's making us prisoners? Maybe we are prisoners because we don't allow our minds to think laterally. Maybe we are prisoners because we don't educate ourselves. And so when people engage us because of the lack of knowledge, doesn't the word of God say, my people perish? So my question simply this morning, what's it that has made you a prisoner for the past year? In your life? In your job? In your family? Have you ever been in a, in a space in your life where you work for a company? And it's painstaking to go to work because there is a 
There's a prison warden that messes your life up when you get to work. Have you ever been in that space? When you work, you love the job that you do. But someone at your workplace has it in for you, and no matter how, with whatever good intentions you go to work, that person will disrupt your life. And maybe, maybe the spaces this morning is a God that invites us and says to us, I want to set you free from that. And maybe all we need is we need the confidence to be able to stand up to people like that. And you know, when people see that we begin to stand up against them, they retaliate. Because suddenly, suddenly we do something that they don't expect. They're so used to being bullies. And I wonder, I wonder this passage of Isaiah 61, whether this passage, Vivian, <clears throat> whether this passage maybe is still speaking to us today. Where the blind shall be restored their sight. Have you heard? Any stories in the scripture where it says Jesus restored sight to the blind in Nazareth? No way. And yet he says to them, the blind shall see. So maybe there are stuff that we don't see in our communities that Jesus wants us to see. Because that's justice. That's when we truly light this candle. When it just doesn't become words that we recite. And so what Jesus says is move from your recitals. Move from the things you only speak and become doers. So the question is simply this. Do you, do you want to be part of the company of people who have polity discussions over stuff? Or would you far rather just be someone that does stuff? I think the most beautiful thing about being part of a church community is, is, is to remain on the skirts that says, I don't want positions. I just want to help and do what, what I can. That makes it beautiful. Because it almost seems in the life of a church that once you get into a position, you listen to all the politics. But it's also the moment in our lives when God invites us to say, why are you blind us? And we can't talk of blindness as if it's other people. We've got to begin to talk of blindness and say, what's my blind spot? Do you know your blind spot when you drive a car? Anybody here that knows of blind spots when you drive a car? The thing about blind spots is that you cannot Turn, unless you've checked your blind spots. What are the blind spots when you drive a car? I didn't do K-50. So I don't know how those things work. Anybody here that's studying K-53? What are blind spots? When you? Places you cannot see with your mirrors. So how do you see the places that you can't see with your mirrors? You must turn your head. It requires a bit of exercise. So the question this morning, if God is going to restore our sight, what are we going to do? I'm, I'm still one of those drivers. I cannot do a reverse if I don't put my, my head out of the window. Huh? Do you put your head out of the window when you reverse turning? Or do you look in the mirror? Usually mirror. <laughs> but the point is this. We all have a blind spot. We all have things we cannot see. And if this Jesus is a reality in our lives for this year, Can we take the blinkers off?
And maybe when we take the blinkers off, then we can come into that stage of our lives where we will know what restoration truly is about. You see, friends, justice stuff, justice stuff is not the stuff that we do here when we simply read a prayer. Those are words. The real thing is when we take those words and we turn it into an action. And you know what happens in a community? People don't want the action. They only want the theories. So I'm inviting you this morning to be led powerfully by the Spirit. And when you are led powerfully by the Spirit, ask yourself this question. Does my spirit concur with your spirit? And if it does, do stuff together. Take hands. Take hands. Create a masikani. Translate that for me into English. So English is not my first language. that we can do stuff together to build a greater community. That we can enable ourselves in such a wonderful space that we change our world. So the question is simply this, Scott, what do we do with this Jesus stuff? And how do we build a sustainable kingdom for God? How do we do that? Those are the questions we need to grapple with because that's what Jesus means when he says the spirit of God is upon me. And the spirit of God can only be upon me when I turn the tables upside down and I create a new world order. I think, I think when we are complacent and we're okay with the status quo, we're no longer in touch with what God's kingdom is about. Do you know what Dominique Gillard says? I want to quote for you what Dominique Gillard says. Dominique Gillard says that there are no disposable people in the kingdom of God. I want to repeat that. There are no disposable people in the kingdom of God. Do you know what it means to be disposable? Not to be reused again. Right? I think the best injury of disposable is Huggies versus Nappies. Anybody here that grew up with Nappies as a way of life? Nappies as a way of life for all the young brides. <laughs> Um, Richard, very, very, very blessed to see that you've brought a family here to, today. We welcome them. Nappies means you are able to take everything that's dirty, loathsome, pervasive, and you, and you discard it. And whatever stain it left, that you find sunlight soap and you begin to do this. And that you make sure the sun is shining because that nappy with that sunlight so needs the sun to shine on it so that it can sparkle again. Disposable simply says <laughs> there's a mistake in there and you simply throw it away. What I'm reading is what's in the kingdom of God <clears throat> is not disposable. God uses and reuses. So I conclude and I ask you this question. Are you disposable or reusable? And if you are reusable, let's create a jubilee. The year of God's favor for part time. Let's create that together. And when we create that together, I can guarantee you that those who feel oppressed, 
would no longer be oppressed. That those who are on the margins would come into the mainstream. That those who are blind will begin to see. All of us as if we live, they will see. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. And maybe, just maybe, just maybe, that every prisoner door could open for us here. I want to invite you this morning to engage the stewards and to begin to say, you know what? I don't want to be disposable any longer. I want to do something here at Park Sunday. I want to get involved. We met yesterday with the WA. We were excited to have Vivian's not only our, our, our Pamela's, but Vivian is also our Women's Association president. And so it poses the question, if Vivian, who's gone through quite an ordeal, it was a heartwarming moment yesterday, wasn't it? When she said, I will continue to serve as president. With all of that, Vivian's moved to this now. <laughs> She's got tools and aids. Through the grace of God. Through the grace of God. You know? And what freedom. What 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 a great moment that you are no longer captive in your home, but that you can be your relax. Yeah. yeah. And you know what she said to us yesterday when I thought she came with someone driving her? She said, no, I'm driving my own car. You know? And this morning when I came here, whose car is there first? Lady Vivian's car. <laughs> she could not wait for this. And that's who we need to be. That's where we need to be. So friends, if you want to join the ladies, please speak to the president, the secretary sitting right there at the back, wave. We had so much fun. We talked until every time we had to say, we're out of the meeting now, let's get back to the meeting. But I pray that this year, would be a year that creates jubilee for us here. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Friends, our response this morning is from our hymn book. And we sing together, Guide me, O, thy great Jehovah.
now in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. We sing the benediction together.